it's time now to start uh, talking more about the Agisoft MetaShape Professional and about the workflow. So you will be able to uh, perform the processing by yourself during your assignment. So what's the uh, Agisoft MetaShape Professional? It's the image-based solution that's aimed uh, at creating 3D content from still images. It started as, um, as a company, as a software package that would uh, allow for not only uh, aerial imagery processing, but also doing like, just like you did in assignment, in previous assignment when you were uh, just uh, creating a 3D model of an item. Uh, so it uh, it uh, is it is not dependable of on what are you taking pictures of. You can make a three D structure of a building or of an item, and you can also create a three D model of the Earth. So it operates with arbitrary images and is efficient in controlled and uncontrolled conditions. And it's what is uh, important that. Uh, the alignment and the 3D model uh, reconstruction is uh, fully automated. You can uh, you have here a couple um, links. So uh, open the uh, slides and you can see the installer, the very detailed uh, PDF manual. You can see here it's loaded. Yes, so it has 145 pages, and you can have all your quest agisoft questions answered then uh, you can also have shorter tutorials for auto photo and dsm generation on uh, dense cloud classification on on the measurements and you have the youtube channel uh, of the agisoft metashape uh, so the pre-processing stage, we were talking about at the beginning that you have three stages, pre-processing, processing, and exporting results. It, it includes loading photos into Metashape, inspecting the loaded images. So you remove unnecessary images. You also remove images that are blurry. Um, it's uh, everything you do before uh, you start clicking uh, at the uh, at the buttons that that start processing. The processing uh, consists of multiple steps. The first one is aligning photos. Uh, we're going to talk about each one separately in length soon. The second one is building dense point cloud. Then you can edit this dense point cloud. Uh, the next step is building mesh, so the polygonal model. And you can also edit this mesh later. Uh, you generate the texture, and at the end you build the DSM and auto mosaic. So there are these five basic steps. We're going to talk about each one separately. Exporting results, as uh, I mentioned before, you can export in multiple multiple uh, mm, extensions. Uh, you can uh, export orthophoto, DSM, point cloud, and 3D models, so you can use it in multiple uh, software packages later. So the pre-processing uh, consists of loading photos, and you also load the camera positions if you have uh, them written in log. Uh, so you, you've, you import the log file into, uh, into the software. If, uh, of course, it is also necess only necessary if it's not written in the exe file. If it is, there, the parameters would lo out load automatically and you will just not need to load uh, the log file at all. You will see it. And this is how it's supposed to look like in your, uh, on your screen. So each of these little dots represent one photo. And you can see here the lines, how we are flying with the uh, drone. So the UAS was following these lines and triggering photo here, 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 and here. And if you see such a grid, uh, when you load the photos, it means that the exterior orientation of the cameras have been loaded into the photos, into the software. What do you have to do next? So you already know 
where is the center of each photo. Now you need to align those photos. So uh, start implementing the structure from motion algorithms uh, that monitor movement of features through the sequence of multiple sequence of multiple images. And it obtains the rel relative location uh, and the acquisition uh, of the acquisition posi positions too. And refines the camera calibration parameters. So after that, you can open the camera calibration report and you can see the interior orientations of the camera. What is generated after that? The sparse point cloud uh, and camera positions. So each uh, in, on each photo, uh, each photo is taken into so-called bundle block adjustment. It's the nonlinear method for refining structure from motion and minimizing the reprojection uh, error. So it detects feature points, uh, various geometrical similarities like edges or specific details, and it finds it on multiple photos and recognizes that it is the same, uh, uh, the same point, the same location on multiple photos. And this point is so-called a tie point. We were talking about tie points on the previous lecture and set of this tie point, tie points, um, it con uh, builds a sparse point cloud. So it subsequently monitor the movement of those points that were detected throughout the sequence of multiple images. And using this information as input, the locations of feature points are estimated and rendered as a sparse 3D point cloud. So how do you do it in Metashape? Here you have the aligned photos. So you can see here those uh, lines, it's the normal to the uh, image plane, how they were aligned together. And here you can see underneath this points, this is a sparse point cloud. You can see here when I disable the cameras, you can see the tie points here. And you have different accuracy settings in Agisoft for, uh, Metashape. In the high accuracy setting uh, requires more uh, computational uh, space and time, and it's more, more time consuming, but it uh, renders the more accurate camera position estimates. And the low accuracy setting it just gives you the rough camera positions. The next step is building the dense point cloud. So this stage consists of the, reconstru uh, the reconstruction of the depth maps for every image. It also can have different quality, highest, high, medium, low, lower. The higher quality, the more accurate camera positions but also the, uh, the process is more time consuming. And also um, uh, you need to look into your computational power in your computer because uh, the, I highly recommend not ever choosing the highest option because it just takes, uh, it freezes your computer and it takes forever. So from this sparse point cloud, we get very very dense it right now it looks here almost like it wouldn't be even points but if you zoom in you can see that those are consists of very very dense points so this is the sparse one that you have just tie points and based on this tie points every image in and depth depth map of every image there are sp sparse uh sparsely uh, packed the point cloud uh, points calculated that con that build this point cloud. There are also different depth filtering modes in Agisoft. Uh, those are algorithms that are sor sorting the outliers because due to some factors like poor texture and some elements of the scene, uh, there are uh, or noisy and badly focused images, you can get outliers. And there are uh, three or basically four, because you can also disable um, the depth filtering mode 
the depth, depth filtering entirely. The mild one is used for complex geometry. So if, for example, you have plants uh, that you want to um, you want to preserve the structure of the plant and you know that the outliers uh, are maybe actual the important geometry of the uh, of the plant so you don't want to sort them out out as outliers uh, on the opposite scale there is an aggressive depth filtering mode that sorts most of the outliers so you can get more smooth uh, model at the end Moderate is uh, you renders results between the mild and aggressive, and then you can have also disabled when you don't sort any outliers at all. You have also an option to edit the dense point cloud you just created. Um, so you can manually remove the points, like in this case, I just selected the um, shadow of the building and manually removed it you can also automatically fil filter based on applied masks uh, masks uh, need to be applied for each photo um, and for sparse cl uh, point cloud only you can uh, automatically um, uh, reduce the number of points in cloud by setting the tie point per photo limit. So how many time points per photo you want to be uh, included in your sparse point cloud. You can also uh, filter based on reprojection error, rec reconstruction uncertainty and image count. 